Hello and welcome to Modkit Mayhem. We started with weathering in the last video and in this video we'll continue on and try and get the last bits finished and at the end of it have a model that's presentable. I did a little bit of research and found out what the next sort of process was and it was a filter and our filter is a kind of overall wash of a certain colour that, um, that tints the initial spray colour so you know with German yellow you'd use a kind of more yellowy colour rather than black. You could use black if you wanted but it does look quite grimy. And then the same with other colours, you know, there's different colours for each each kind of colour of tank, green or yellow or grey. I didn't really know what to, to do because I didn't have actually any filters in. So in the end, I just got the MIG enamel wash and thinned it down and used that instead and applied it all over the model. And then through chance, I kind of found that I could do a kind of streaking effect on the larger panels because they were such a large expansive area that um, they looked a bit odd. So with the rain streaks, it kind of gave it a really nice texture. After I'd done the main hull, I then went on to the details, the gun and the actual gun housing and uh, anything else that needed kind of the same color wash. The one thing again, enamels absolutely stink. So in the future, I'm going to try and do it with a, um, an acrylic instead. Started to do the gun barrel just to give it a little bit of depth in the kind of the areas where the, the sort of parts are in separate steps. So you can just add a little bit of a darker color ring around them and then fade it out. It just gives it an extra depth. After that, it was onto the wheels, which are actually kind of quite fun. <laughs> the only part that actually is fun doing wheels. The trick is to make sure the filter's not too thick that it actually is painting on, but actually kind of just tints the color. So it'll kind of just add a subtle color. Just make it out if you're doing it right. At least that's what I found. Then the sprockets. Make sure to do the in, in the recesses and um, at the actual back sprocket, because that's it's easy to forget that and have to go back and do it later. Don't overload the brush because it's very easy to have too much of the filter on your brush and it just swamp the area. Just dab it onto a tissue before you actually sort of paint the more detailed areas like the kind of the back idle wheels that you know where the bolts are. Although I say this is a kind of yellow filter, it's actually more brown really. Right, next, chipping. I had a slightly lighter yellow version of the paint that I'd sprayed the Hummel in. Using a sponge which I pressed into an old knife handle, I just managed to sort of get enough rough points of the sponge to sort of stick out so that you could dab that in the, the lighter paint just to test the process because I hadn't done it before. I got the ammunition box so I, I just tried it on that and just to get used to how the sort of how it works in terms of the application. And then after that, I was confident enough to go on and do the actual gun. And then the other areas. You have to be careful. It's very easy to do just a bit too big a blob of paint on the chip. So if you do do that, just get a brush and water it down and just wipe away the, the, the excess paint and you can start again once it's dry. So it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world if you, if you make a mistake. Just watch out for large, too large chips. You do get the odd one, but you know, and you can do something with that. But when it becomes a, like a, a pattern that looks the same, your, your eye notices it. So it's worth just trying, starting again. Again, this is all techniques that I've just picked up and kind of worked out on the, along the way. Um, you know, this is not the be and end all. There's plenty of other ways of doing this and I'll probably try them the next mod kit. So far, I kind of I muddled my way through this kit <laughs> doing it this way in it and it kind of worked. After that, I went and um, got some rust and I used some joystick ash. So let a joystick burn, the ash falls down, collect that up and you can just mix it in with paint and it creates quite good rust effect. So it's perfect for exhausts. After I'd done that, I moved on to the tracks. I applied a rust wash just over the metals, very watered down rust paint. I then took a dark red rusty color and used that on the chips rather than a black or a gray. You could do that, but for some reason, I think that works better with sort of yellowy color of the vehicle. Once the filter dried on the hull, which I painted a little bit later, I could get on with the chipping again. So back to the chipping with the sponge and uh, try and refine the sort of technique. Overall, I feel like I did too much chipping on this. I, I didn't intend to put so much down, but it just kind of happens with the sponge. 
the way it is. So on the Panther, I think I'll try and do a little bit less, just be a little bit more aware of where I'm sort of overdoing it. You know, you, that's how you learn. Around the hatches, that's a good place for chips. Then I applied a grease kind of shade, black shade wash where the gun is going to sit. I don't think you can actually see, well, you can see part of it, but it's not really that visible. So I didn't have to cover as much as I did. The black shade works really well for sort of an oil effect. Then I applied the floor grating. The floor has to be as messy as possible because it looks all uniform one color and just doesn't look right. I just blodged a load of colors on there, but with the black shade around the edges just to give it some more depth. I also used these shades to kind of do a pin edge around the panels. This area is going to be really scratched and dirty because a lot of sort of crew work around this area and you know heavy shells go in and lots of metal gets dropped and it's probably stood on. So it's going to be really grimy and um, very chipped. I don't know how actually accurate this part of the area of the vehicle is on the Dragon 90s kit. It's probably been updated in the Tamiya, so I might actually buy the Tamiya just out of interest in the future and do a kind of updated version of this, maybe in a year's time when, when I've had enough of, uh, work and crew compartments and need a little bit of rest from that now. So the Panther will be a nice change for that. Back to the chipping. Again, using dark red or a, a metally rusty red. You just the thing is, it's, there's no quick and easy way around this. You have to sit and do it. Probably took me a day to just do all the chipping on this whole vehicle. That's why doing less chipping would be better. These vehicles never lasted that long. Too much just looks a bit odd. Looks like something from a scrapyard that's you know, years after the war. That's my personal preference. I mean, how you do it, it's up to you at the end of the day. Start chipping on the outside hull. This is where you kind of really have to be careful because this is the outside part. This is the part you'll see first. Just take your time and, and go steady and don't overload your brush with too much paint. You know, just keep it nice and, and smooth and relaxed. Put some good music on, settle down so you don't get agitated doing the actual job. Luckily with the sponge technique, it lays down an area that's quite random. So you don't have to choose where the spots are. You just have to paint the dark red on top of the actual white areas that have been marked out by the sponge. So it looks quite random once you, uh, you've you covered most of it. You don't have to do all of them. You know, the majority of the larger ones, medium size and, and the occasional smaller ones, you know, that looks perfectly fine. Here you can see after I'd, um, I'd done all the chipping, I realized that the, the kind of the hull was very monotonous in color. So I decided to kind of tone it. Just got some middle stone yellow and just tried it on an edge, just watered it down and, and just faded it out. And it gave a really nice depth to the actual sort of large areas. I don't know if there's a name for this technique because it's kind of shading, but not. Um, it's a later shading and probably should have done it before the chipping. I'll know for next time. It actually brings a lot more depth to the actual vehicle. So I was really chuffed with that. Just choose sort of really interesting areas and get a little bit of yellow in there on that sort of that kind of brighter yellow, but not too thick. It's got to be subtle enough that you kind of notice it, but don't. You can see here how watered the actual mix is. And if you get too much on there, just get a bit of tissue and you can, you can dab it off. I was really happy with the result of that. It really brought the model sort of to life. I, was, I felt that was a quite good step up from where it was at a certain stage. And it doesn't take very long compared to the chipping. <laughs> Here you can see I'm doing the front. Kind of just choose like one face and then go from there. Just mark out an edge of it with a thicker bit of paint and then use the water to just make it run off. And uh, it's very subtle. You can just barely see it, but uh, it definitely, definitely adds a lot to the, to the actual overall model. Went on to paint the ammunition locker weird thing happened with the black it kind of went sort of cracked and slightly strange it was fine just put the brass on top and uh, you can't see it some kind of reaction there quite satisfying painting brass like this i also mixed up a little bit of very watery rust brown and just applied that to sort of some of the areas again i didn't want to overdo it preference how much you add to it but for me just just a subtle on a little bit on the corners just to give it a little bit more depth 
mud. Glorious mud. I bought some grout and I thought I'll try and give that a go on this model. And uh, But I don't know how it dried. I don't know even how much water I was supposed to add to it. So it was a lot of experimenting. And of course, the perfect place to experiment is the bottom of the hole because nobody will see that. So I tried different things. I just mixed a little bit of brown paint with it because it, it was kind of a slightly lighter color than I thought it was going to be. Mixed it up, applied it to the bottom of the hull and just let it dry. While that was drying, carried on painting some of the details. Middlestone seems to be the best for this kind of job. So once the mud had dry, I tried out different paints. You can see there's a rust and then there's a kind of, I think it's a rocky sand. And then there's the actual splash, Vallejo splash mud, which is the kind of glossier color at the bottom there. And that worked really well. So I decided that's probably the best way to proceed. So I started applying a mix to the tracks first. It's quite watery on well, the mix I made. I probably could have left it dry a little bit longer and it would have made it more kind of thicker. In fact, in the next video, I might try doing some different techniques with the mud and see what kind of works best. But I think mixing a very dark chocolate brown and then letting it dry for sort of 10 minutes and see how much thicker it is and apply it to some tracks then and see if you can actually, you know, look like clods of earth. Also adding some sort of dry grass just to give it a little bit more texture. I tried rubbing off some of the excess just to sort of see if you could still see a little bit of silver. My intention was this vehicle to be sort of just before spring, so it was very, still very muddy and not dried out yet. I chose much darker muds rather than the lighter, so it'd only dry in certain areas higher up, but generally it's much, of a, much more of a darker kind of mix. Using a sort of rubbish old brush, you just apply it liberally to sort of the areas where it'd collect the most and then water it down in between that just so it, it's uh, it kind of, you can still see some of the yellow of the hull. Also around the back idle wheel would be a lot of mud as it sort of falls down off the track because you get a lot more sort of soil at the back rather than the front. If you look at photos for reference, you'll see that on another tank. Also kicked up underneath that exhaust area. This probably took me the most amount of time because I was kind of a bit unsure of the process. So I kind of had to work it out and pray I didn't wreck anything. I think I'd be a little bit more liberal on the next one. <laughs> but this time it was just kind of tentatively work your way forward and just see what looks best and work it out as you go. Probably the best way to do it when you're not too sure of the process. The one good thing, it does dry very quickly. So you can get on with, you know, the next part. It, don't, it doesn't slow you down. You don't have to wait overnight or anything because there's so many processes in this. Three main steps really is applying the actual mud. It dries out to a light color. Then you use a darker color, brown. No, actually the black shade in fact worked best because it went to a darkish, dryish color. So it's kind of a mid-tone. And then I used the Vallejo glossy mud lower down. It's the best way to do it. Using a flat brush, you can brush down to give it kind of streaks like water's washed it down. And that's quite a nice effect. And then use a stick to sort of put some into the cog recesses. Probably a little bit more precise than using a brush because it kind of goes everywhere with a brush. And using a watered down mix of it then, I applied it over the wheels and the cogs just in sort of spinny motion just to give it kind of a little bit more extra dirt because they were looking quite clean. Although I quite liked them like that, but it didn't really match the rest of the hulls so they had to have more dirt on them. Just keep working it until you're sort of happy with the results. I mean, it gets to the point where you're not really doing much more, so you kind of just need to know where, where to stop, really. So this is a little bit later on. The mud has dried. You can see it's a lot lighter in certain areas, so it's don't judge it straight away. Give it a good 20, 50 minutes, you know, go make a cup of tea, have a, have a break, and then come back to it, and you'll, you'll have a better sense of where it's at. So you can see it's really dry now. It's all monotonous colour. So once that was like that, it was time to go into the second phase, which I talked about earlier. Get the black shade, put it on the brush and just dopple it onto the tracks, which gives a nice sort of grease kind of mottled pattern. I was quite happy with that. It looks really good. Uh, yeah, just liberally apply the shade over it. Just as simple as that, really. Work into the areas where the actual dirt will be still kind of partly damp. Mix it, dry brush it, do any kind of technique that works. You can't really go wrong, really. You know, it's just just go for it using a technique that I'd seen some of the other people doing. Um, just take a stick and uh, get your brush and just fleck it on. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Technical term, fleck. It, it looks really nice. You can just, just sort of liberally put it all over the sort of the back areas where it's splashed up. If you get any sort of larger blobs, 
you can just use the brush just slightly just brush those away and um, they, they'll become streaks and so it works it works quite well like that I kind of because I knew I'd be putting pine tree leaves on this the soils are really dark if you look at diggers or machinery that works for forestry the soil is incredibly peaty so it's 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 a much darker brown so that's that's why here it's kind of more Ardennes kind of dark mud this is when you realize you've just covered all that chipping that you did earlier on shade behind the vehicle wheels now this will go a kind of matte darker brown so it looks like it's it's starting to dry out but it hasn't totally dried out yet and my desk was starting to look a right mess by now <laughs> i didn't i didn't even bother tidying up which i should have but uh, so it was quite uh, well i usually keep it very clean because uh, it's easy to knock things over but I was, there was so much work to do i just kept going and there was paint everywhere and we're moving on to the wheels now again just getting the rubber tires painting them with the shade and then quickly kind of just going over the sort of the, the other areas i'd forgotten to do actually under the, the hull really area so i had to go back and do that which was a bit of a pain but uh, it needed doing after that was all done and dry the next day i went on and actually started constructing the the parts the elements so put the gun housing together uh, the gun carriage and um, what i didn't allow for was the actual when you spray it actually increases kind of the area so parts don't fit as well as they used to which was a bit of a mistake on my part, which made it very hard to attach together again. So next time I'll have to make sure and double check that the parts still fit. Broke a couple of things, trying to sort of build the actual parts, which was really frustrating. After a lot of swearing, I <laughs> got there in the end. Uh, so nice to start putting the actual vehicle together. I used a bit of super glue and just attached all the elements that I painted. Put them all in place and then um, got them fixed down. I was going to add MG34 and a, and a rifle, but in the end it just it would have been too much, so I just left them off. Even though I'd painted them, I just put them aside. I think it looks fine just as it is with the crates and boxes and, and the tarps and, uh, and the single figure, which I paint a bit later on. So here it is. Here's the final completed model. It's all together. It just needs a, a finishing coat of matte, which I'll do. I've run out of time. But I was really, really happy with how it was finished. You know, and I haven't finished a model since I was probably 10. So this is the first one I've finished in how many of years. Um, so I was really chuffed with that. And it's really good. And I'm, you know, the next one's the Panther. So everything I've learned from this, I can apply to the Panther. I hope you enjoyed the process. Thank you very much for watching all the videos and, and joining me in this. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Please like below and, and subscribe if you can. That'd be great. And uh, I'll see you for the next video. I think I'm going to do something a little bit lighter for the next one. And then we'll go on to the Panther. But um, cheers for now. Thanks very much. Tra. Bye.